You know guys, in my career, I have found myself on the side of the road with lights flashing in my mirror dozens of times. Sometimes I had it coming, but more often than not, I was just doing what you guys are probably doing every day, going to work at a speed I found pretty reasonable. Did you know that one in five drivers get a ticket every single year, but only 5% of drivers can test their tickets? That means big business and big revenue for the police and the court system. You're always better off fighting any ticket, especially with the help of a professional. But how do you find that professional, especially if you get a ticket outside of your home city? Off the Record fights tickets and misdemeanors for drivers all across the country. When you book a case with Off the Record, you're matched with an experienced local lawyer that handles your case from start to finish. Off the Record has a 97% success rate and a money back guarantee if they don't keep that ticket off your record. Do yourself a favor and always fight your tickets. Go to offtherecord.com slash TST, the link is in the video description, or download the iOS and Android Off The Record app and enter code TST10. Do it now because the code will cover all your legal services through Off The Record for three whole years. What up, everybody? Welcome to an interesting sort of gadget episode of The Smoking Tire. In my right hand, the Valentine One radar detector, in use on my windshield in one way or another since 2005. In my left hand, the Valentine One Generation Two. I actually never thought I would see this. And so, we put the old one and the new one side by side on the windshield of the Volvo V90. Me and Zach hopped in the car and we drove laps around LA looking for cops. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to the 405 freeway. Not typically where you see Zach and I driving, but today we're going on a short little uh, jaunt, getting out of quarantine, we're escaping, we're conducting essential business. Uh, for many years, uh, Zach and I have been uh, devout users of the Valentine One radar detector, uh, myself in conjunction with Waze in modern times, and Valentine, has a new one after 20 something years. Uh, the rock moved out of the way of the cave. Yes. And a new Valentine one has emerged. Uh, and I, uh, I do a lot of driving. Uh, and while I don't typically use a radar detector within the city very often, we have to go outside the city to the canyons and to racetracks or driving to San Diego or Vegas or skiing. And, uh, and they are still prevalent. They are still uh, helpful. They they still uh, the price of a radar detector. Oh, look at this. Hang on. Let's just go slow because there's a police officer on the right hand side of the road with a customer, as with they customer. say, not shooting radar. That looks like a person who's having a problem. They're both they're both on their cell phone. But I'll be a good citizen and I'm going to mark it on ways. Report set. I'm a good citizen. Mark on ways. So we've got my old Valentine one, which has been updated uh, as uh, factory recommended. We've got the new Valentine 1 Gen 2. Why it isn't called Valentine 2, I will never know. And then we've got Vinny's uh, Unidin R7, which our friends at Vortex said was a very good unit uh, at the time they reviewed it just before the Valentine 2 came out. Did they tell you what this one's you know, selling points were versus Vinny's? I didn't watch it. I didn't watch it, but Vinny watched the, the most recent comparison and ended up buying that one. Gotcha. And it has a ni that the Uniden has a nice uh, color display, like a full LCD display. Whereas even the new Valentine Two, or I'm going to call it that, even though it's not what it's called, but it's helpful. The Gen Two has an updated version of the OG valentine one display because the og display is just some red lights behind the arrows and then a single digit uh god you know if you're if you're at a baseball game and the score pops up like that's what it is you know it's, it's right seven different little lit up lines like that's as complicated as it gets Very but it speaks a language sure. that when you learn the language it is actually incredibly communicative in a good way so uh, the things about the Valentine one when it was new and even until now, I'm talking about the original, it has great range. Yes. 
it has uh, the it had the arrows, which were you know it was the only one with the directional arrows for I mean, a long time. For a long time, that was like that was like, hey, this life jacket has straps. The other ones are just a ring. Like right. It was a huge advancement because, at least in our opinion, it was far more important to know where the radar or laser or whatever was coming from yeah. than knowing than getting a signal 100 feet or 500 feet sooner because if you don't know which direction it's coming from I didn't think it was very helpful at all like the mere did. presence of radar is not enough which is you. what like the passports advertise they would tell you about the presence of radar right. because your behavior is different depending on oh here we go Valentine right. 2 picking up a KA ahead got nothing on nothing the original on the other and nothing ones. on unit in. now but, oh, it's uh, it's a week a week ahead signal. The Valentine Two has uh, a new type of signal processing software, as well as a new magnesium case. So, in theory, or it's uh, they claim, I should say, that it helps process weaker signals that are further away. Uh, we are in logic mode right now, which is supposed to filter out some of the false K A uh, K band signals that you would get from, like, uh, radar cruise control and uh, a collision avoidance system. Because I do remember that being a big problem when those first really started coming on the market and being really common on the highways, is if you if you hadn't disabled some of the bands on your radar detector, you'd get near infinity. You get, infinities were really big. You'd get near those, and, like, X-band would go crazy. The FXs. The infinity FX was the king of setting off your, your K-band. Yeah, they make you poo. Yeah. And so... One of the things that I like about Valentine, I mean, the original one for sure, was that it would give you all of the information it could gather. As much, it was people who complained about it would complain that it was too sensitive, it would give you too much information. But if you dug into the user manual a little bit, you could disable X and K band individually. So my Valentine one is a KA band detector only. Now. There might be a community in America where the cops still shoot Ken. Yes. I'm not definitively saying that that doesn't exist. But I have driven hundreds of thousands of miles across the country, back and forth, all over the place. I've never once been hit by K-Ban that was an actual cop. It's Ever. It's extremely rare because I believe it's like X was developed first, then K, then KA. So the cheaper system is going to be K or X. And maybe there's some communities that didn't get, you know, the newer radar guns as they evolved. But by now, KA has been out for, I don't know, right. someone, will, someone in the comments will say it's probably been out for 30, 40 years. And, you know, departments have probably all gotten issued those KA radar, or those KA um, guns. speed guns. Yeah. And also, you deal with a lot of laser here, which a Valentine 1 or another radar detector doesn't really help you all that much with laser. All of the technologies that a lot of the other companies use, the GPS, where if you if you get the same false K over and over, it'll filter it out, like, all of that stuff, to me, just kind of dances around the fact that I would like all K signals filtered out entirely, and all X signals, because to me, those are not threats. They're I didn't know not. you could do that, and then, like, I've had a radar, radar detector since, like, 2000, I think, and then I met you. And you and Tom said, oh, you know, you can turn off yeah. X and K. And it was like, what? Yeah. I mean, it was it was incredible because it, you you don't realize how many sliding doors at gas stations run on one of those bands and set off every time you drive by. And how many cars and their radar crews and whatever uh, collision detection systems use K as well. And so, not that this is legal advice. If you do want all the information, you can leave it on, but... In both the V1 and the V1 Gen 2, you can deactivate them entirely. You have to do it through a really funky series of button presses and knob turns in the 1. In the V2, there's an app, and so you just go into the menus and uncheck them. It's very, very simple. So, other things with the Valentine 2, though, I'm just going to keep calling that. The Valentine 2 that are really cool. There's a module you can get called Savvy. And the module plugs into your OBD2 port, and it acts as the hardwiring kit for the radar detector. It still runs a wire down the A pillar into there, right? And so it's your hardwire kit, but also it has a little scrolly wheel on it. And so in, in another option that Valentine is giving you to filter out bad signals, you use the scrolly wheel to set a speed. 
anywhere from 15 to 65 miles an hour. And below that threshold, it will only give you alerts at the muted volume. So if you go listen, V1, don't bother me under 50. I'm good. It just won't. So that's a great thing to have. And that works with the old one too. But it, it it's... Uh, and if you want to uh, use that feature in the app, it has it with the app as well, but then you can't hardwire, right? So you can hardwire and have the little box, or if you bring your Valentine to another car, like we've got it in a press car right now, I can program through the app to have that feature. Which is great because there's a lot of cars that have you know cruise control and adjustable things. You can go in those menus and, and set the same warning. You can say, hey, right. warn me if I'm going five over or 70 miles an hour because you don't want to accidentally press the gas too hard uh, and so it's, it's cool that they added that function so now it does Valentine 2 picking up multiple K-band alerts uh, I, don't know, I don't know what you are body parts maybe uh, multiple K-band alerts uh, with uh, Uniden and V1 not saying a not saying a peep do we know is anything disabled on the Uniden nope that's just on uh, it's on city mode Gotcha. So uh, which I think is on a, an X-band kind of filtering mode. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Now look, LA is dense. You know, LA has a lot going on. There's a lot of signals bouncing around. So if you're watching this video from somewhere in Kansas, and you live in a small town and you don't have these problems, you can use either Valentine One or Valentine Two on one of their logic modes, which filters out some of that stuff, and you probably won't have problems. But if you live in a major metro area. The problem with many radar detectors is too much information, too many alerts, you stop listening to them. By deactivating X and K in my Valentine 1 for the last 12 years, if that thing makes noise, I pay attention because it so rarely makes noise. Yeah. If it makes noise, it's a cop. That's not to say it catches every cop, but if it makes noise, it's a cop. I mean, that's the best sure. part about disabling those things. And then, you know, they, they try to build in these systems where it's smart and it can it can just, it hears how much is coming in and it tries to filter out what's important and what isn't. Um, but for a while, it was better to just disable those things. I think they said in the new one, they've updated the processing power by like 100 times. So it might be able to do a better job of taking in all that info and filtering things out. But again, it's... It's, we think, I think it's easier to just manually disable those things, but it does have this logic mode that can try to sort it out for you. I've been using the new Valentine for four or five days now. Um, it definitely makes a lot more noise in logic mode than my deactivated one. You know what I mean? Because all of the light up signs and the your speed is 47 signs like all of that stuff does set off a signal now if the signal is like a weaker signal it gives you it does give you the muted one but it certainly makes more noise whereas my other one in the city my valentine one stays basically silent totally silent um and so what i do like is that they're like a they're like a company that just sells you undiluted barrel proof alcohol, <laughs> and then you can decide how much you want to dilute it down. They give you a manual and right. they say if you mix it with these things, <laughs> yes. you'll get you'll get Jack Daniels, you'll yes. get Booker, you'll get these di you know different amounts. I like yeah. That's funny. And so so they th what I like is I think they give you the option to have as much information as possible, right? If I'm going to go on a road trip cross-country, I'm going to leave Los Angeles, and I'm going to drive across cornfields for four or five days in the desert, I want all that information. Whatever's out here, you tell me. Mm -hmm. But if I'm in the city, I want you to filter out some of this garbage because I'm just trying to get to work, and I only want to know if it's a KA or a laser, you know, because that's going to be a cop for sure. And I've got my screen filled with ways which either of these two is not an infallible system, but when you combine them, man, most of the time something comes up. Most of the time. I think that's that's a benefit of the new one of just having that savvy knob and having the app. Like you have multiple ways in which you could kind of turn down the noise in the city. Like, right. like if logic, if you find logic mode is still too sensitive, yeah. then you can just say, look, don't bug me if it's, I'm going under 40 miles an hour. Yeah, if I'm really in good. the surface streets at a 35, like, you know what I mean? Don't leave me alone. Yeah, what do I need, what do I need to be notified for? Yeah. Um, so, we're going to keep running these and we'll come back to you uh, at the end of our 100-mile freeway drive 
and we'll let you know if one comes out as a clear winner, or if you should sell your V1 and get the V2, or uh, whatever we figure out Yeah, in our non-scientific <laughs> test. Well, there's a cop right there. Oh, yeah. Just with the construction crew. Just kind of, yeah. Yeah, I don't know if he's got radar on, but... I think they usually have to sit there just as, yeah. like, safety support with lights on, especially that's at nighttime. Yeah, that's the construction crew. Do you want to get... Yeah. Oh. That's K. He might have been sitting there with the uh, construction crew. Yeah, though. yeah. That's probably what it was. All right, well, okay. so far... <laughs> so far, K only. So far, K only. The cops are not delivering. All right, well, we're going to... We're going to about face this Volvo pretty soon, but we are stopping first. We are stopping first at a... Nope, I got both picking up K from ahead. You did it was first. It was, look, seconds. it's the rate, it's the your speed is sign on the other side there. The way. Yep. So there are, sometimes that happens if you've never used one of these, where the radar is firing this way and it hits other cars that are coming towards you and then bounces towards you. Yeah. Yeah, we got multiple Ks. No KA. And then laser is so instant that uh, you usually, it goes off just to tell you you're about to get a ticket. It's pretty much what it's doing. Yeah. It's notifying you like a summons before you get pulled over. Uh, you call it a pre-trial motion. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so we're making Are a you stop. Guys fair? Yes, I am. You've been served. We're stopping at Newport Beach at a warehouse where we will be picking up 50 Optima Digital 400 battery tenders for Westside Collector Car Storage. Optima is going to be the official battery tender provider of Westside Collector Car Storage. And being that we have a full-size Volvo wagon, we can fit 50 battery tenders in the back. So we're doubling it up. We're going to load this thing up with battery tenders, and then we'll uh, do some more radaring on the way back to Culver City. All right. Lots of K everywhere. That was definitely a tie. A tie between Unit and V2 for the K band. So if those are real cops, then hopefully you can get some radar. Hopefully. Prius whipping. Wow, going for it. Might be a good test of radar. Maybe it'll be an instant on. Well, there's a, a highway patrol cruiser just merged on. Look, they're right there. Ooh. That's a. I don't even know how they would get out. It's so a great hiding spot. That person get out. would that cop shoot the radar, and then another cop comes to get you. I think probably they call ahead. I hate to say it, but so far, in terms of actually showing where actual police are, Waze is winning. These have made a lot of beeps and stuff about... Well, Waze will always win because you can zoom out and someone could mark a cop 30 miles down the road. And right. You look at it and see that. Right, but what we've seen are, like, a bunch of police on this highway, mm -hmm. but, like, doing things that don't involve having a radar gun on right now. That doesn't mean they couldn't catch you doing whatever you were doing. True. So, like, you're saying that right now... Waze is winning. <laughs> I think you're right. I, when we started this whole thing, I said I didn't like Waze, I didn't use Waze, because I thought that the, the navigation in my, in my past experiences was terrible, which they've updated and changed. And then I also didn't like relying on the kindness of strangers to tell me when there were police ahead, because if they don't, if people don't mark it, then you might come around a corner and there is a cop. But you're right, in this case, people are saying, like, hey, there's construction, there's cops, yeah. and if they're not shooting radar, then these won't pick that up. And it's not... It's not purely uh, the goodness of their hearts either. Like, people are really dumb, and, be, like, Waze has made it a game. Like, there's points. You can get points. You can get, like, status in a way. Didn't know that. It's very And clever. so, you're not doing it just to be nice. You're doing it to play the game right. you're of winning. Waze. You're getting likes. Yes. You're getting Waze likes. You get Waze likes, Waze status. Both. Yep, we got more more K. 
both of them are giving it to us. So we kept finding K-Band, but we couldn't find anything else. But that wouldn't have been a good test. That wouldn't have been a good comparison. So Matt went out the next day and went for another drive and had a little bit more luck. Oh, K-A. Finally a K-A. Valentine 1 Gen 2 is the first to pick it up. Unidin is the second to pick it up. The Valentine 1 had that by about two seconds there. They both got it. Finally some K-A. Mm. That took two days to find K-A. All right. Where are you at? That was a, it was a fairly weak signal. I only got one bar of KA from each of them. But Valentine 2 and Unidin both got it. Valentine 1 did not. Oh. Oh. There we go. All three radar detectors have picked up a KA signal. And if I'm honest, the Valentine 2 got it first. It picked up the weakest signal a solid four or five seconds before the others did, and then the others all picked it up at the same time later. We learned some things driving around Los Angeles for about 250 miles. The first of which is it's actually kind of hard to intentionally find cops who are shooting radar at you. <laughs> but that notwithstanding, uh, so far in our experience, the pros of the Valentine 1 Gen 2 are that it offers pretty much everything the 1 offered, but more sensitivity for softer signals, uh, a quicker, easier way to adjust it using the app, which is a better interface than the knob, although I do miss the volume knob. You get volume buttons on top. Not quite as good as the knob. I love the knob. I miss the knob, but the interaction with the app is really helpful. Plus, you've got this savvy thing, which you can set it a uh, threshold, and that works for either Valentine 1 or Valentine 2. I think they've improved on the original one, added some features that make it more user-friendly, and they haven't ruined it at all. It still works great. It still speaks the same language as the Valentine 1 Gen 1 did, so I don't have to learn anything new. It still works the same way. And uh, so far, it's low sample size, right? I've only gotten a few KA hits so far, but it does offer more sensitivity than the Valentine 1. The unit in R7, we enjoyed also. Pros of that one, big color screen. If you want that big color screen, that's got it. So it just really spells out you don't have to learn a new language. You can put that in anyone's car, and they don't need to know what that means. It's it's KA band strong, like the, you know. So if you want that, Unidin was the best for that, and offered in our testing the same range as the first gen Valentine one. The second gen Valentine one seemed to offer a little more sensitivity than that Unidin as well. I can say that I'm happy I bought the Valentine one Gen two. It is a good piece of hardware. So far, it seems to do everything they advertise that it does. It's as programmable as the original unit, but offers more sensitivity and more information if you want that as well, which I like. It's also a very little bit slimmer, otherwise about the same size. Uh, I am going to keep using it, and I hope we'll do an update somewhere uh, down the road once I've got some more miles with it. But that's just our early getting to know you test of the Valentine 1 Gen 2 radar detector. And if you want to see the science -y version, check out our friends at Vortex Radar. They own radar guns and they do science over there. And if you want to really get the intricacies of range, uh, then they'll probably have that for you. In conclusion, Radar detectors, especially used in conjunction with Waze, are still a very valuable tool that can still help you have more infor information, much more information, uh, at the times you might need it. Uh, the last thing I will say about our test is that I was in incredibly surprised at how useful of a tool Waze is on the freeway, even more than ever, especially because the thing that these radar detectors ultimately need is a policeman shooting radar. Plenty of policemen are out there on the highways doing their job in one way or another, having a presence but not actively shooting radar. Maybe they're shooting laser, maybe they're shooting instant on radar, or maybe they're just manning a post. 
a lot of those times, neither radar detector told us that they were there, but Waze did successfully because they made it a game where people can earn points, not out of the goodness of their hearts. So use it all, folks. Use a radar detector, use Waze. And if you are looking for a new one, so far, I'm pretty happy with the Valentine One Gen 2. Thank you for watching, and we'll see you later. I bet you thought that was the end, huh? Well, no. There's a sad PS to this story, which is that four days after I finished uh, shooting our test video, the Valentine One Gen 2 died. I moved it from the Volvo V90 into the next press car we had, which was the Porsche Macan Turbo, and when I plugged it into the 12 volt, it just got no power. Uh, I tried multiple different power cords. I tried multiple different uh, <laughs> plugs. I tried multiple different cars. Uh, unfortunately, none of it worked. And so my Valentine 1 Gen 2 is going to have to go back to Valentine Research to be repaired or replaced. And they're closed as of May 2nd for coronavirus, which is very unfortunate. So we'll have to wait. While it was working, this thing was excellent. I think it was my favorite unit I've ever used. Then it stopped working. So unfortunately, the saga continues and uh, we'll continue our testing sometime down the road when I get one that works. Bye. And remember, always fight your tickets. Go to offtherecord.com slash TST or use code TST10 on the Off The Record app.